Do you like vibrant colors, flashy skill animations, and GV characters? Do you like gacha RNG progression that may or may not involve real money? Do you like grinding for hours on end in hopes that you'll someday reach the next level? Then MapleStory might be the game for you. MapleStory is one of the biggest games in Korea. Its chibi characters and My Little Pony style coloring lends itself to believe that it's a kid's game, but don't be fooled by that. MapleStory is as much a kid's game as is competitive Pokemon. Gearing, bossing, grinding have a lot more in-depth than the game would have you believe based on looks. The game has been out for a long time, and its uniqueness in style as being one of the few 2D MMORPGs and its success in the West have contributed to it standing the test of time. A game as old as this has two problems here on YouTube. Very old and no longer relevant videos, and new videos made by people who have played the game for so long or have played the game in the past and compare it to the game that it was back then and not to games that exist in the market these days. I wanted to see what the game was like for new players, seeing as the influx of new players is one of the contributing factors to the long-term success of a game in most cases. So here's what I did. I unequipped my legion, I didn't use any link skills, I used experience buffs but that's only because they were given to me for not logging in for a long time and because they were given to me through the fairy bro gift thing which is something that a new player can and will have access to. Maybe not the not playing bit, but you can do that yourself. And before you go on that I'm using a Terraburn character and that's cheating, the game is way, way too slow to not play a Terraburn character. I would never recommend that anyone start playing this game without a Terraburn event. And for those of you asking what Terraburn is, it's essentially three times leveling speed and extra gear that you wouldn't normally have access to. Keep in mind, I'm doing this on Reboot. Number one reason being that it is the most popular server style in the West due to the lack of pay to win features. So what's my goal? My goal is to reach 200, which is out of 275, uh, 300 soon, is considered by most veterans to be, quote, finishing the tutorial, unquote. Now, without further ado, here is my experience as a new player. The game starts out pretty straightforward. You're given a quest, it shows you how to move around the world, how to jump, how to uh, jump down from platforms, how to interact with things, and how to attack. The tutorial might not be as complete for other characters, but in this case for Kadena and for a new player, it's pretty good. The game teaches you how to distribute your AP. There's an auto assign feature, which takes all of the thinking out of the equation. And it also pops up your skill tree. So you put your points into your skills, something that it might not happen for all characters, but for this one, at least everything seems good. But so far the progression seems okay. Every time you complete a quest, you get a few levels. I'm getting three times the levels because of terror burning, but I'm getting about one level per quest, which I think is okay. If I do 200 quests, then I should get 200, right? So after some more fetch quests, kill some monsters, get their items, kill more monsters, get their items, kill more monsters, get their items, you start to get the idea that this is going to be a grindy game, which is not necessarily a bad thing if you're into that kind of stuff. As for the storyline itself, I myself skipped it, but it's fully voice acted, the voice acting seemed good, so for people who like that, um, this class in particular, I would recommend uh, watching the story. <laughs> Big mistake. It might be also worth mentioning that a lot of characters have a lot of story, and the stories are all in a way tied together to this whole main plot of the, of the game, and... You kinda have to go through all of them to get a good picture of what the story actually is. Everyone has their stakes in this, everyone has their participation in this, everyone has their motives. It's pretty, pretty darn cool. Now, did you just see that? Or did you miss it? Because I missed it when I was playing. This is something really important that is not enforced onto new players. Those messages at the top, 
they keep showing every time I level, so whenever there's something that is not leveling that it's showing, I'll probably miss it, because I'm just expecting there to be a level the notification there. But as you can see, my second job is available, and I had no idea. How was I supposed to know? At the very least, when you click the thing, it has a red text, and it stands out from everything else, but still, it could be better. So more kill quests, more fetch quests, go here, kill some monsters, go back, go here, kill some monsters, standard stuff. Eventually, you reach the end of your quest line, and suddenly the game stops holding your hand, and what are you supposed to do now? So, there's a maple guy that I closed earlier. I'm gonna stop myself right there. Kadena does not actually ever open the maple guide, but those pop-up messages for leveling do show that there is guide available, so I'll use it anyway. And it told me to give a key behind to it. And if I use that, I can see what the game suggests that I should do. Now, keep in mind, these suggestions are not always the best. I'll try to use them as I level up and see what it's like. This maple guide thing also solves the problem of the job advancement because it shows in a big button in the center uh, job advancement whenever I try to decide what I'm going to do next. So, as we have some grind footage, I would like to tell you about why I picked a Kadena. Kadena is a class that I'm not familiar with, which is good, because that more emulates how a new player would play. Second reason being, I wanted a class that was not a top tier farmer, but at the same time wasn't an old character that is probably not gonna be a character that a new player plays, because uh, new characters are on the left in the character select screen. So let's talk a little bit about Lynx, Legion, and account progression. Maple Legion, or Union, it's the system that makes your account stronger the more you play. The more characters you level, the stronger your legion. This system incentivizes you to replay the game and get stronger and faster every time that you level a new character. If I was using my legion for example, I would be one-shotting most mobs up until level 100, and people with stronger accounts will be one-shotting mobs up until higher levels than, for example, me, who has a very small legion. If I were using it. Since I'm not, I'm one-shotting mobs up until level 10, 20, 30, something like that. The second part about this is link skills. Link skills are character specific and it's something that your character can give your other characters to make them stronger. So leveling up in MapleStory as a whole is not just a one character experience, it's something that you deal with pretty much all 40 plus characters that the game has. So this grind starts to slow down as I'm getting to 100. As an old player, I know that there's a new advancement at level 100, but for anyone else, it starts to get a little bit tedious. And in a way, I guess this is one of the major points why people who have played the game for so long think that it's easy to level. It's because they have a strong legion. Strong legion makes it so you one-shot mobs until higher level, which means you level faster. A person without that has none of these things, so leveling can be a grind. So there we go, level 100, 2 hours, 24 minutes. If that seems like a lot to you, just wait until we try to go to 200. Level 100, or 4th job advancement, is the point where you finally see if you enjoy your character or not. If you don't enjoy the way it plays at this level, you most likely won't ever enjoy your character, so you're better off picking another class and playing something else. 
And while there's more grinding to do, let me take a little detour and talk to you about what the game also has to offer, which is events. These events are a way to keep active players interested and a way to keep them from diverging into other games, because some of these have such good rewards that you don't want to skip them at all. These events happen fairly regularly, and if they use the baseline from KMS, the Korean server, they're all about pretty much the same, so even if you miss out on them, they're not too bad to miss out on. The issue is that some of them have time-limited items, or there's some unintended mechanic with a class that doesn't exist on the original Korean servers and the event just blows out of proportions. There's also the issue of some events not being balanced by the Korean server which makes them completely broken compared to everything else. In any case, if there's an event going on, you should take advantage and do it. On the subject of time limited things, there are some equipments that are not obtainable by new players, only old players have them, and there are also items that are much harder to obtain now than they were back then. I should point out the legacy item issue is something exclusive to non-KMS servers because KMS servers do not have them and they balance their game correctly, but since neighbor support no longer exists, if we want to play MapleStory, we have to play on a non-KMS server. This completely goes against the idea. For most MMOs, you want to make things easier for new players so they can catch up to the already existing players and raise the roof for existing players so they have more content to do. There is also the issue with the aforementioned non-KMS character previously having a low barrier to entry way of farming in-game currency that got removed, making farming for in-game currency require a lot more investment than previously. Anyway, rant over, let's go back to the leveling. There's not much to say about the leveling, it's just grinding, following where the maple guy tells you, grind, grind, grind. So instead, let's do something fun. I went back on my footage and I timestamped every single level up. So I can make this graph that shows how long I spent on each level. It took me roughly 9 hours to get to level 200, and this is counting with buffs. I also did the maths if I removed the buffs, or in this case doubled the time that I took with the buffs on. I took roughly 12 hours to get to this level. I don't know about you, but for me, 12 hours to finish a tutorial is a really long time. So, to close off this video, MapleStory certainly has a lot of flaws, especially on GMS, but much like old school RuneScape, it still holds up pretty well for a game of its age, despite the lack of revamps. It's still an MMORPG, and as such requires a lot more time investment than you would expect from a game that looks so innocent. Less than 1% of the players have ever even had a shot at defeating the final boss that has been out for two years now. But if you're still curious, check the game out, it's free, just be prepared for a lot of grinding and time-gated daily quests. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe out there.